Hello and welcome to a Shine Drive installation video. Today's video will cover the full installation of the Shine Drive desktop client for Windows and also the integration into Content Server. For today, I'm going to be using Content Server 16.2. To begin with, we can navigate to our website for downloading. After you have downloaded, you can right click on the zip folder that you just downloaded, go to the properties, and you want to go to the general tab and ensure at the bottom that it is unblocked. Check off the unblock and click apply. So after it has been extracted, you can see here that there are some subfolders. You can see the first one is the content server module. Next is live link module. Also we have the Mac OS client, the Shine Drive server, the SMT tool, the Tomcat libs, and Windows folder. So we're going to navigate into your Tomcat web app directory. And before we copy over the Shine Drive server, we want to stop the Tomcat. And this will ensure that the Tomcat does not try to deploy the .war file until it's fully copied over into Tomcat. After it has been stopped, you can copy over the server. And also at this time, we're going to be copying over the Shine Drive services. This one here is the SD CSWS. Uh, this is for the newer content servers. And the other one here inside the Live Link module folder uh, is for the Live Link connection services. For today, because I'm using Content Server 16.2, we are going to use the SDCS WS. So this one would apply to Content Server 10, 10 10.5, 16.x. All right, so we're just going to copy that over into the web apps. And next, we're going to need the Content Web Services that is supplied by Content Server. So if you navigate into your open text folder and down into the web services inside Java folder and copy over the cws.war. Now that the three components are moved into Tomcat web apps directory, we can now start Tomcat. As it's deploying here, you can go in and ensure that the server.xml file is set up in Tomcat. And here we are going to verify that it is set up for UTF-8. So I recommend that you open this file up in a text editor like Notepad++ or Sublime. And we are going to navigate down to the connector port 8080, which is the default connector port. And we are going to be putting in here capitals URI encoding equals in quotes UTF-8. And we have to save the changes. And at any time when you make any changes to this file, you will have to restart Tomcat as well. Now that this is set up, we can navigate into the bin directory. This is a line that has to be put in for the Java options. And this is for the UTF-8 as well. So it's going to be dash, and a capital D, and then F for file dot encoding equals UTF-8. Any changes that you make here, you will again have to restart Tomcat. Also down here, uh, the maximum memory pool, this is here to ensure that there is enough resources allocated to Tomcat. For example, you are uploading a file that is 500 meg. You want to have, I would say, minimum 1.5 gig of memory allocated to Tomcat. The higher the number that you can put in here that, that you have available resources on your environment, uh, the better Tomcat will be running. Next, what we're going to be doing here is installing the content server module for the Shine Drive service. So if you can open up a separate browser and we're going to verify that Tomcat is actually running. So if you want to type in the DNS or IP of where the Tomcat is running and port 8080, and this will just verify that Tomcat is actually running. And then after that, we will verify that the actual Shine Drive server is running. And so if you want to type in the same port, but with a forward slash Shiny Drive dash server and then forward slash admin. So at this point, so you can see here that you just need to enter your password. Uh, this is any password that you want. Just ensure that you write it down. So at this time, this is where you're going to be uploading your Shine Drive license. Click on Upload License, navigate to where you have your license file stored, and click Open. You want to verify that everything here is active, that should be, that is included in your license file. Also, we have activation date. The activation date is for anything that is currently not activated, but will become activated at a specific date. So in this case, at September 7th, 2017, 
the HPAL feature became active. And if there was any expiry dates, that would be listed as well. And all we're going to do is just click Apply License. And license uploaded successfully. And as you can see on the bottom here, it says Unlicensed Features. This is just a basic outline of everything that may not be on your license file. Okay, so next what we're going to be doing before we're going to add the drives and profiles, I'm just going to add the content server module into content server. And this is for the Shine Drive service. So we'll just navigate into your content server and enter with the admin. And we're just going to go into the admin content server. And I'll just show you here what version of content server that I am running. So as you can see, it's 16.2. Next, what we're going to do is just uh, click on install modules. As you can see, there's nothing in here yet because we didn't actually copy over the module into the staging area. So we will do that this time. If you navigate back to your Shine Drive suite that you extracted, and we are going to grab the applicable Shine Drive service for that content server. We have three here. So we have content server 16, we have content server 10.5, and we have content server 10. For this one, I am going to be picking the content server 16, and I'm going to be extracting this zip. After it has been extracted, so you can go ahead and navigate in, and we're going to be copying over inside the staging folder. So it's going to be a Shine Drive service and then the version number. And we're going to copy this whole folder over into our OpenText staging folder. So I'll just drag it over, and then I will refresh the Internet Explorer browser. And now it's in there. So just check it off and install. So while Content Server is restarting, we will go ahead and add the content source. All you have to do is just click on Add Sources, and we're going to pick our connector type first. Next, you're going to enter your Content Server URL where you can connect to. For myself, it's going to be HTTP 10.0. That 243, that 34. Next, this Shiny Drive service URL. This is the service that is deployed in the Tomcat web apps directory, and the same as the web services base URL. And after you change the web services base URL, it uh, automatically changes the below fields as required. So this is here the Shiny Drive service and the CWS is pointing to. For some reason, uh, you entered the incorrect URL for one of these. When you go to click the add button, you'll see here that you get a red X. So you automatically know right away that uh, you have the incorrect URL. So no worries, you can just correct it and click add again. Next, what we're gonna be doing is adding the drives. So just click on add drive and we can enter here enterprise workspace and select your drive letter from the drop down menu on the right. And you wanna pick one that you are not using in your environment and uh, the content source we just created below. And the root ID for the enterprise workspace, you can either enter 2000 or enterprise and then no space with a capital WS. Under the advanced settings, I'll just show you here quickly. There'll be another video to explain how to edit all these the way that you want as required. Now that we can just click add, and this will actually add the drive that we just created. Next, what we're gonna be doing is the profile. So this is the profile that the users are going to be entering uh, into the client. This will hold all the drives that you are allocating to the specific profile. Here, we're just capital drive, and we'll check off the drive that we just created and click add. All right, if for some reason uh, you want to change your drive name or your profile or even your content sources name, uh, what you can do is just click on the drive and you can rename it to anything that you want and just click save and that will automatically update within the profile. So next, what we're going to be doing is testing to verify that the drives and connectors and the profile that we just created is working properly. So if you click on the top right where it says go to web app, and this will take you to a sign-in page that will connect you to your content server instance. These credentials here are for the content server itself, and the profile is the one we just created, and click login. So far, we can see the test drive that we created, and now we want to navigate into there to verify that we see the contents. So these contents here are the same as what we would see on the Enterprise Workspace uh, directly on Content Server. If for some reason you want to change the drive name while we're still connected, you can always do that. You can just change it like we did previously and click Save. And so now if you go back into uh, Shine Drive, you refresh the page, 
and this will have the changes here. All right, so that's the personal workspace drive here, and we will mount that. And the same thing here for the root ID, we can just put in personal, and then with no space, we can capital WS, click add, and then into the drive profile, and we'll check off the personal workspace. And just to show you here, if you actually create the drive with the same drive letter, uh, you will notice that you're unable to select a drive within the profile that does not have the same drive letter. And it will just have a red line through it. So you can cancel that and select the drive letter that uh, is appropriate. Yeah, after you pick your correct drive letter, uh, you can go ahead and check it off and click Save. All right, so after we add the personal workspace to our profile, uh, we can verify that it's there. Uh, we can go back to where we're logged into our Shine Drive, and we will see here that the personal workspace is now listed. I'll just show you here that the same contents are inside Content Server as it is in Shine Drive. Okay, so now that that is complete, we are now going to install the Windows desktop client. So if you go back into your Shine Drive Suite folder that you extracted previously, and we are going to go into the Windows and then the installers, we want to verify what operating system you are running. So if you go into the system, and you'll just verify mine is 64 bits. So we are going to be using the 64 bit installers. At this time, what we're going to be doing is opening up a command prompt in an elevated mode, um, and we're going to be running the Shine Drive setup. 64.bat file. So the easy way to get to this directory here is just right click on the top URL in the Windows Explorer and you can copy the address as text. And at the bottom left of your Windows, you're going to do a search just for CMD. And the result, just right click on that on the command prompt and run as administrator. So now we're just going to CD uh, change directory into the before we run uh, the bat file, what we're going to do, I'm just going to show you that for the Office add-in, uh, you do require a BSTO uh, Office runtime. I'll just show you this in the apps and features. So as you can see here, it says Visual Studio uh, 2010 uh, tools for Office runtime. And uh, of course, I have the 64-bit because I'm running 64-bit OS. So if you don't have this installed, and if you're using the Office add-in, uh, you do want to install these. Also in the registry, and because I'm running Windows 10, I'm going to check the .NET version that I am running. Uh, we need at least .NET 4.6.2, and the one I'm running is 4.7. After we have verified that we have the Office runtime and also the .NET version, we are going to be running the .bat file. By default, if you just type in Shine Drive uh, setup 64.bat and run that command, uh, that will only install the Shine Docs drivers and also the Shine Drive desktop client. If you want to install all the MSIs listed in the installer directory here, we will type Shine Drive Setup 64.bat and then do a space and type all. When you enter this command, it will install these MSIs and also automatically restart your desktop. Now that the desktop has restarted, we're going to verify that the desktop client is able to connect to our content source. So as you can see here, the Shine Drive automatically pops up with a login screen and we're going to enter your content server username, password, and the server is where our Shiny Drive server is located. Uh, so this here is going to be http colon forward slash forward slash, and then the IP address or the DNS. So in this case, it's 10.0.243.34, and uh, the port 8080, and Shiny Drive dash server. And at the bottom here, we have the profile. So this is the profile that we created on our min panel and this is just Drive. And we're going to click Connect. Okay, so you'll notice at the bottom right, you'll see that it says Mounting the Enterprise Workspace, and you'll also get a notification saying Mounting the Personal Workspace. Now that the Shine Drive has connected, uh, we are going to open up Windows Explorer and verify that the drives are mounted correctly. So we see here the Enterprise Workspace and also the Personal Workspace are listed. And you can just click on them and ensure that the content is correct inside.